When many of us are worried about financial security and retirement, an employer-sponsored retirement plan is one of your most powerful tools. Yeah, here to help you understand the steps involved in preparing for retirement and making the most of your options if you contribute to a 401k retirement plan is Chris Hobart. He's the president and CEO of Hobart Financial Group. Chris, it's wonderful to see yes. you. Thanks for being here today. Oh, thanks for having me get back, guys. It really is a great way to save for retirement using the 401k, and you're going to help us get the most out of it. Your first bit of advice, Chris, is to maximize your retirement plan contribution. We should be doing that? You definitely should be doing that. In fact, I was just talking to somebody in your studio and they said, I don't need to start planning yet. And the reality is yes. Yes, you do. So here's a couple of tips. Well, first of all, it's important to understand the number one fear for Americans today, it's not death, it's not public speaking anymore. It's running out of money in retirement. So we've got to start planning somehow, some way. So a couple of tips here. One, if you get a raise, instead of allowing your raise just to go to your pocket to go spend frivolously, take a little piece of that and make sure that it goes towards retirement. Something else that everyone should be doing is if you have a 401k at your company or some sort of retirement plan, if there is a match, at least, at very least, be, com uh, be contributing to that level. So if they match at 5%, you've got to get up to that. That's free money coming from your employer. Mm -hmm. No reason not to take free money. I love free money. <laughs> so. We'll take it. Can I ask you this? Mm -hmm. if, should you exceed that match if you can? I mean, is that a good idea? It is. Now, here's, there's the big question. You should exceed that match if you can, but you should also make sure that once you hit that match level, maybe start saving some money outside of your 401k. Okay. That way you've got some money saved up for emergencies and different things that hop up that we don't necessarily plan for. You don't want all your money locked up in retirement, but once you've met that need over there, then begin to contribute more in the 401k. Okay. And that's why it's so important to understand your plan features. If you have a 401k, pl 401k plan, you need to know what's going on with it. Well, that's exactly it. Most people don't realize that they're paying money for their 401k. They think, oh, my employer is so nice, they pay for it. No. Mm. All 401ks have fees that you're paying for. Mm -hmm. the, the companies aren't just in business to do nice <laughs> They're stuff They're not that for nice. Yeah. Not yeah. nice. Yeah, right. So ask your plan sponsor what the costs are. Find out what your investment options are. You may find that the costs are really, really high internal on these things. You also might find out that it doesn't have investment options that fit your phase of life or your risk tolerance. Oh, wow. If that's the case, you can ask your plan sponsor can I roll my money out of this and stay working? It's what's called an in-service distribution where you still work, you still contribute, but every once in a while you roll your money over into another plan, which is called an IRA or self-directed IRA. You can control right. costs mm -hmm. and you can also now have different uh, options for investing. Okay, can you talk about what happens if you switch employers? Yeah, you know, it's, uh, I think the number now is you'll have 11 different employers during your lifetime. So it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. So the options that you really have would be, number one, you may be able to keep your money with your existing employer. Now, some employers these days say, we don't want your money. Take it. you got 90 days. If that's the case, you can either roll the money over <clears throat> to your new employer or you can put it into a self-directed IRA. There's no taxes. There's no penalties to do that. The final option, and I'm going to warn everybody against this, is to cash out. That means get the mm. check and put it in your pocket. Sometimes if your 401k is very small, it's easy to say, well, I'm going to just do that. But you pay taxes and you pay a penalty yes, to do, do that as well. It's not worth it. So really understand those options and don't walk down a path of what the easiest thing to do is because oftentimes the easy thing in 401ks costs the most money. Okay. So is that why it's easy? I mean, someone like you can help us develop a long-term strategy? Exactly. Think of it like this. Uh, I, I was just uh, traveling to New York City last week, and it was very nice when I hopped on the plane and the pilot said, hey, we're, we're going to New York City and we know where we're going to land and we've got a plan. Yep. Now, the reality is during that flight, he may have varied a little bit here and there, but we knew where we started and we knew where we were going to end. Financial planners do the same thing, which is a matter of saying, where are you right now? Where are we looking to go? We're going to veer off the path a little bit, and that's okay. Emergencies happen. Crazy things happen. But we know where we need to end up, which is our retirement date and how much money we need to have saved up gotcha. to have a healthy retirement. Okay. You also say, Chris, to understand your investment risk. Yeah. Now, this is very important. See, most of the time, when you take those risk questionnaires, people are trying to find out what your risk capacity is. So risk capacity means, oh, you're a 30-year-old guy. Boy, you've got a long time. You can take a lot of risk. You can take more risk. There's a problem with that. I know a lot of 30-year-old guys out there, they don't want to take risk. They're scared of risk. They saw mom and dad lose a lot of money in the market yeah, in 2008 exactly. and 2000. Their risk tolerance is much lower. So what's very important to understand is risk capacity and risk tolerance are two different things. Oh. A good planner's job is to marry the two together, which is what's your tolerance 
and what's your capacity and let's make sure we kind of meet in a good safe zone where you feel comfortable where you're not taking too much risk. It's kind of like going to Carowinds thinking you're standing in the line for the uh, carousel <laughs> and you find out you're going to that one. Uh, or <laughs> the, the yeah, yeah, exactly. And you're sitting there saying, whoa, 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 we're online, but it's too late. Right. So you don't want your money to be doing the same thing. I mean, this is, this is what's going to support mm. you for the rest of your life in retirement. Makes a lot of sense, lot doesn't of sense. it? Um, whether you're leaving your job or you're on the wrong side of the economic downturn, the transition can be a stressful experience. Ensure that you're prepared by asking Chris Hobart and his team how you can improve your retirement outlook. Get your free copy of this right here, Preparing for a Satisfying Retirement. Call 704-553-0123. Again, the number, it's on your screen, 704 704- Five five three zero one two three. You'll get a free copy of this filled with all kinds of wonderful information that you'll want. Chris Hobart is simply the best. Thank you so much. It's great to see you. Thanks, guys. Love having Thank you, you here. No doubt. Thank you.